Hi, everyone, and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer, and I'm the founder and CEO, as well as the host of this weekly broadcast um, put on by SPED Homeschool. We at SPED Homeschool empower families to home educate children with learning challenges, and I encourage you to check out our website at spedhomeschool.com to learn more about the resources and support that we offer families. And you know what? Some of the best... um, resources that we have our partners and i'm excited again today to have another one of our partners on with us amanda duncan welcome amanda thanks for being with us Wonderful to be here. yeah across the ocean we are keeping this conversation going so amanda is over in the uk and of course um, i'm in the middle of the united states here in texas um if you want are watching and you want to pop on and say where you are from we'd love to know where you're watching from too i know we have viewers all over the world and so it's exciting to hear but um also know that um, we are doing this live so if you have a friend that um, may want to join us we're talking about Um, communication skills, improving them through storytelling on the go today. Um, It's one of the things that um, as we're wrapping up this month of April, we've been focusing a lot on how do we get learning outside you know, and kind of away from the books because we're we're probably kind of sick and tired of the books after so many months. I know that's how I always was with homeschooling my kids, my very active boys. Um, we just got to get outside. So, um, so hopefully today we'll give you some encouragement and, as well as some ideas on how to do that. So, um, so yeah, let's um, see. So yeah, share the broadcast. Know if you want to put comments or questions on if you're watching on YouTube or on our Facebook page, you can do that right in the feed and we will see those come up on my screen and we'll incorporate those in our conversation. Um, so if you have any questions off the top, make sure you um, throw those in or as we're going along, we'll we'll see those as well. So, um, and if you're joining us on a recorded session, thank you for doing that. Thank you for downloading our <laughs> podcast. A lot of you do that. I know I was at another conference this last weekend and so many parents said, I just love plugging you in my ear when I'm doing dishes. So if you're doing dishes, we hope that we make your dishwashing um, a little more enjoyable. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, so Amanda, as we get started, I would just love our audience to get to know maybe a little bit more about you and, um, and, and, and then we'll, we'll talk about, I guess you can talk about your organization too, and maybe just why you're so passionate about storytelling in general. It'd be a great mm. way to start. Well, um, so I'm the founder of uh, Scribe Easy, which is a children's storytelling platform. Um, And it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to develop fun strategies to improve Mm. children's vocabulary, their communication and holistic outcomes. Storytelling is dear to my heart, as I'm sure it is Mm. for many um, parents who read to their children, who are using the world around them to use that as a a launch pad for for imparting information. But the wonderful thing around um, the platform that we developed is to try and embed and integrate sort of a blended learning approach Mm. so that you could share knowledge, but then help children with developing um, their skills to actually use the information. So Mm. to have skills, a chance to have fun with building vocabulary, um, the links, yeah. it's really interesting, actually. I mean, so one of the reasons I started Scribe Easy was actually for my son, mm. uh, dyslexia. And he was coming home uh, from school at the time and feeling very uh, disillusioned that mm. he was singled out in, you know, into a separate mm. class. And, and he was really fixated on the technique. And it worried me that within mm. the classroom environment, it was, you know, it wasn't the focus on what he had to say, but it was how he was oh, doing. Oh, the mechanics, yes. The mechanics. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I worried. Uh, I'd read a report um, from NASA mm. um, about children going into schools. Ninety-seven uh, percent of them are near geniuses when they go in. So the mm. age of three was a longitudinal study, and then NASA. I think it was over seven or eight years. Um, then they tested the same cohort of children, and rote learning had kind of 
well drilled oh. out it wow. wasn't the, the, the kind of confidence of children the, the creative confidence so yes mm. they memorize you know good at, with memory um they'd acquired skill school skills but mm -hmm. in terms of inventive powers that those you know that that sort of the whole brain needs to be working together right. mm -hmm. and so, you know they'd kind of lost their confidence and those those near geniuses it was only i think three percent um had retained wow. as adults you know the, the years later that same um ability hmm. and that really struck me uh, my background is art so i was mm. an art teacher um i actually have a, a master's in ceramics and glass and oh, i remember awesome. when i got to um the royal college of art thinking why did it why did i have to wait so long to mm -hmm. learn how to learn yeah. and um, <laughs> i i think uh families who are in that wonderful position where they have the opportunity to to teach children you know the the, the mm -hmm. inspiration imparting that that knowledge and allowing children the the belief um that you know to trust them that yes. by in the right uh -huh. direction yeah that, they will develop the skills. You might have to wait a little bit because it's very tempting to just give them a, a spelling oh, list. Yes. And then, mm -hmm. yes, they know it. But actually, long term studies show that when children learn to become good researchers and all those skill sets, so give them the framework to discover, mm -hmm. put them in the right environment, and then let them go. And those skills will, they're lifelong skills. Yes. And, and I think the thing, the last little thing that struck me was um, at school, I hadn't done very well in maths. I hadn't done very mm. well in um, chemistry and sciences. And yet I get onto my master's and and I excelled in chemistry because I was formulating mm. phrases. I was suddenly- Yes, uh -huh. in a the interest-based learning. Where, mm -hmm. Yeah, where the minerals come from, where the cobalt come, you know, the mountains in Zaire. It was mm -hmm. just suddenly, the periodic table took on a whole new meaning for me yeah. because I was interested in it. And so that was the start for me with Scribe Easy to, to help my son mm. and to allow him a, a method that would allow him to learn to tell stories, build his vocabulary through his interests. So we would mm. scrapbooking really, but we yeah. digitized it so we could scale it. That's so cool. Yeah. And I love you sharing your example like that, because um, I think as parents, like especially of young children, we can sometimes look at how the um, the rote learning just has to happen. It yeah. has to happen. And and yet we we can make it so tedious and difficult. And and I know I felt a lot of times like I was just talking to a blank wall with my kids <laughs> and um and I really felt uncomfortable with that method and I I felt a lot of people around me were very much in disagreement with what I did um when I homeschooled my kids but now looking at how creative my kids are as young adults um I I don't regret having taught them in a much more different method than mm. just rote learning. And I didn't know about that study, but I guess internally that was just how I felt God was leading me and I, I followed it and mm. um, it, was, it was awesome. So, yeah. so yeah, so thank you for, for sharing that. Cause yeah, it's, um, it's important for us to hear over and over again. And um, so, so yeah, so I, you've got some slides and I'm going to pull those up um so that we can see them and if you are listening on the podcast just know that um you can pop over to our youtube channel at sped homeschool and you can watch this full interview um, we're also going to share um three or four um, shorter segments next week um, on our YouTube channel as well. So if there's just a small section that you want to rewatch instead of um, listening or watching the entire one, um, those those will be on our YouTube channel next week. But um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about improving communication through on the go storytelling and I'm excited to get started. So um, so just let me know when I should be popping through the slides and I will will do that. <laughs> so okay, I well, yeah, slide slide two I've kind of covered so mm -hmm. a little bit 
about me, um, my studio, um, and the, the kind of work um, that I've done in the past in terms of where ceramics led me as a designer, um, but also now uh, moving into technology. Mm. Uh, as with uh, Scribe Easy, we deliver workshops um, around the world and the, in the UK. Um, but digital okay. storytelling, but it's very, if we go to the next slide, um, yeah. just the screenshots from the platform, um, just to give an overview of the approaches, children can make things. So the workshops mm -hmm. include making uh, things which and items, which then they take in to build digital pictures. So the, the communication is in the composition of an image. So the stillness right. of an image, how you might use language, the scale, perspective, moving things around, giving children time to, you know, for ideation. Um, oh, so yeah. visual spelling list, for example, mm -hmm. um, you, you're working with teeth or a deer or a robot that you've made. Um, mm -hmm. And the platform allows children to work in a very self-contained place, but use their storytelling research so photographs that they've made and objects that they've made mm -hmm. and then help them um, through uh, analysis through technology if we can break down the sorts of words that they've written through might have um, text to speech children's vocabulary are often right. more um it's more uh, you know it's going to be wider than when it's written or if they're not typing so fast but they can get mm -hmm. words down onto the page very quickly which means that we can appeal to all sorts of abilities and then help children from once their words are on the page, parts of speech, the verbs, the nouns, to start to understand the patterns around your own learning. Right. So giving children the tools to be, um, to, to work together with parents, mm -hmm. but also um, to start to analyze their, you know, their, their stories. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. was the thrust of scrubbies you know the next slide i won't talk too much about scrubbies yeah. but well and i wanted to point out too is you know that the text-to-speech is great but when using it like just alone by itself it turns into dictation which is an extremely difficult thing to do <laughs> even as an adult i find it hard to dictate because i have to add in the commas and you know and you can go back and do that but um but the way that you have it set up because i've i've used a um the, your program, you gave me a sample of it. And it was so easy to just be able to pick and choose those words. And, um, and then you can stop yourself. And like you said, with the images they add in, and it's, it's a process. And um, so it's just, it's really cool. And it's colorful, too, which, you know, yeah. brings well, kids we, in. It, it does. And, and it's interesting, we'll talk a little bit more because it, this, this topic was so close to everything that we do. Um, mm. Um, but in terms of using photographs um, and then combining things, so rather than giving a child a photograph, suddenly they they pick the objects. It's their mm -hmm. choices. Um, but the the use of photographs it means that um, you know their descriptions are very powerful uh, because yeah. they can actually see the colours. They're analysing. I mean, I just wanted to include very quickly this um, this. I really love this. Uh, you see the goblin with the. Mm -hmm. um, house um you probably don't have many houses like this in texas but um this is a little old house in the cotswold which is in the middle of england mm. but um, the we asked the and these were reception years children so these are four and five year olds and okay. this we asked the children so there's there are 30 a class of 30 and so some examples here and we asked them to find in the story pack the, the crooked house and then find the goblin. So that was a little bit, you know, some research, mm -hmm. hearing the words, and then describe the goblin by looking at the crooked house. Hmm. So this is what one, and there's a thesaurus in the platform as well. Um, the hunchback old goblin was as corrupt. So they got that word, they typed in bad initially. Right, and then the thesaurus brought up the, yep. <laughs> corrupt, misshapen, and crooked as the ancient stony house and the crumbly brickwork is like the goblin's flaky skin. And mm. for a young writer, you know, to start seeing the world and th th to open up, rather than just focusing, we show children where to focus their attention mm -hmm. within the photographs or on, the, you know, on their journey, 
which we'll talk about more, but the, yeah. the, it enriches the storytelling just by showing children where to look and how mm -hmm. to look. Right, yeah, because yeah, when we get into the mechanics, we yeah. forget about the creativity part that's really necessary for storytelling. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. So the, the next slide, Peggy. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. start with um, what we'd love to show you or share with you today. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go through the why and the tools and yeah. resources, okay, and the ability to notice, the bu building curiosity, and the benefits, outcomes, and emerging patterns. So I'm excited to get started. So um, so let's start with the why then. <laughs> so I thought it was useful to, to just stop and think, well, what is And what is, yeah, what is communication? That's like the elephant in the room, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, and why is it important? And how can storytelling on the go well, how, do, how does it actually play a role in building up good communication skills? Hmm. And I think it's really, as parents, we're rushing around a lot of the time and, you know, you're trying to fit things in and you just the trip to the shops, you know, or mm -hmm. whether you're doing your online shopping and busy lifestyles. Right. Um, we forget sometimes that there every so many moments can be a moment mm. for building a little bit of so creativity. True and sharing a little bit of, of information. Um, and so to think about uh, communication, it's uh, the next slide. Yeah. Is, uh, it's an opportunity as, you know, within discussions, our trips, our, you know, car journeys, um, mm. walking, talk, you know, those talking, to, to always have opportunity to build up the four c's which we need more now than ever for the 21st mm. century mm -hmm. Peggy and I, we were just talking earlier about how children now are going to change jobs typically seven times or more in their lifetimes the, yeah, the careers mm -hmm. yeah their careers are going to change and i i can see with my eyes so closely tuned into technology um mm. the 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 biggest demand for employability is creativity yeah. is having children that have agile thinking mm -hmm. that work with information um so are skillful in their with their um abilities mm -hmm. but actually they take information and repurpose it reuse it yeah um, so out of that skills i mean i'm we're, we're working closely with a lot of nurseries and very early years here as well hmm. and um it's really interesting the links with communication and vocabulary that's earned learned in the early years and teenage uh behavioral um patterns ah. uh, hmm. the, the children that are there's a longitudinal study i can post up the links for yeah the, yeah but, um, i'll share them in the description if if you yes. share with me, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was a research that was done in um, Australia and they showed that um, children that had wider vocabulary in their early years um, just went on to be far more successful, were less likely to uh, fall foul in their, you know, mm -hmm. in, their, in their ways to drop out. Um, right. It was quite, you know, quite profound really how... Mm having really good vocabulary um, hmm. affected children's behavior and because wow. it's obvious in a way but their mm -hmm. ability to self-express but just coming back we I talk about vocabulary but vocabulary can be a um, you know many things um if we mm. go to the next slide yeah children's skill sets through their speech through their visual cues and this is where storytelling mm. go is wonderful because um you know if, if you're observing um mm -hmm. noticing people's reactions building up children's social and emotional learning is really powerful mm -hmm. um you know body posture oh, how do you think that what was going on there do you sort of mm -hmm. read those kind of mm -hmm. those unspoken of, cues yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah um obviously the parts of speech i think um we do a lot of work within our workshops on giving children choice. So the words you might want to choose, the verbs, the um, the adjectives. So mm. she was happy 
or she was delighted or she was ecstatic suddenly mm. or there's more punch or there's more power so having right. range emotional range within your vocabulary so showing children the you know you could focus quite quickly on a specific specific word that they've used but then give them the ranges um mm. up and down of that you know the emotional valence is you know yeah. is, is quite um, powerful to the children mm -hmm. um, creative formats um obviously there's the different sorts of communication that comes through art and film um I've, there's a in the middle here the picture here is um, a lovely wall that uh, is painted uh, a street artist in london bridge hmm. and i see him recently on a on, on a walk and he showed us his he'd been paid by our london transport to to decorate walls mm -hmm. street art and it was absolutely amazing to stand and observe and see how these hearts, how people reacted, passers by, and they would stand and cuddle each other in front of the hearts. And oh wow! Just <laughs> amazing. And it's those little sort of touches and those that bringing those, I guess those um, moments of for children to observe mm. how colours and tone and shapes. Um, are all forms of communication too and right. how they can make others feel mm. um, so empathy mm -hmm. um, pattern temperature um, so that was sort of a cover off of the sorts of ways we get quite focused on communication being one one thing yes you know, so yes and that's, and that's good to remember mm -hmm. yes and children the, the the tin cans here well they're, they're paper cans but uh -huh. those were workshops that we did recently and the children all made uh an artwork a tin can themselves with their mm -hmm. own labels to express oh. themselves and oh. so they were drawing and created their own fonts um mm. created their own uh and used their colors to self-express and and then talk about things so it was a wonderful right. um thing so next slide yeah yeah it's it's amazing when you you start with that that component that gives them the ability to choose and create and just how much communication can come from that. Mm. That's really exciting. All right, so tools for storytellers. I'm yeah, so, excited about this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I was thinking about storytelling on the go and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure most parents will, you know, be very familiar with these kind of things. So keeping notes, scrapbooking, mm -hmm taking photographs with your phone, um, collecting things and obviously analyzing them later, mm -hmm. or measuring things. They're great opportunities for the maths and the science and then the research right. after, also, also before, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, hmm. And uh, things, if you're reading books, how you might bring a book to life through, for example, a journey mm. by looking at the characters that might fit the characters that you're reading about. Ah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll talk about this later, but I'm reading a wonderful book at the moment um, by Catherine Rundell. It's called Rooftoppers. I recommend it so mm. highly. Um, but uh, the characters are so vivid. But now I'm mm. walking around, it's for sort of, well, children nine years up. Uh -huh. um but it's lovely when you look around and you're enjoying a book but then suddenly you think oh that would that would suit that character or yes it does that i didn't yeah i guess i haven't ever processed that but yes when you're in the midst of a, a story and you kind of start bringing that whole thing into your world and you find yourself using some of the words that the characters use and <laughs> all of <Yeah>. that <laughs> or you're at the checkout till and you think hi oh, that character would really fit that character mm -hmm. you know these those mm -hmm. just right books yeah. to life. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously uh, I was thinking about um, car journeys. Uh, mm. Sometimes it's really good to just let children get a little bit bored, look out the window. And yes. Uh -huh. and, now in the and, day and age when we've got video screens in front of them and all of those things, we, we've lost that that art of imagination and, yes. and boredom <laughs> that, yes. that we had in our generation. <laughs> yes. So. And, and I'm such a big fan of of allowing children to have a little bit of time to 
be a little bit bored because mm -hmm. that's when the invention starts. And I think yes. it's very easy to give children something to do. Big mm -hmm. tendency, read a book, do this, or, you know, why mm -hmm. don't you draw? But allow children to make the decisions for themselves because you're empowering them as adults to, yeah. to think about how to fill time. Mm, and when they start so making, mm. yeah, um, and I see it, you know, with my son now, uh, you know, a bored mum, and it's really mm -hmm. hard sometimes because I'll just try and not <laughs> say anything, rather right? Because <laughs> he knows where everything is, mm -hmm. and um, and it's interesting to see after a bit. And he's, oh, he's gone and he started doing that. It was uh -huh. it's good. Yeah, um, yeah. We would take our kids yeah. camping and then hiking. And of course, some of the places we went camping, I mean, now you can get data just about everywhere. But um, it, during that time, we didn't always have mobile data. And so they were bored a lot more because <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we created those scenarios where there wasn't any place to plug in up things and on all of that. And yeah. So, so if you're desperate and you're finding out, how do I get my kids off of technology? Just go camping for a week. Yeah, go camping. <laughs> then start picking up the leaves and the twigs and the yes, and the, or just listening to the picking out the different sounds of the of the birds. You know, it's mm. we if we forget, we I think there's there's a lot of pressure on as parents to feel oh, we've got to set our child up for for careers, for their, you know, mm, to mm -hmm. have more, as most, much intelligence and knowledge as possible. But actually, um, you know, the, the ability to, to work with just a little bit of information mm -hmm. and be agile in your thinking and quick thinking is just as powerful. Children will pick yes. up. Mm. The, they, don't, they don't need to be on a quiz all the time, do they? Just answering questions. It's um, Exactly. Yes, yes. That is a very, very good reminder. <laughs> so the next, the next um, slide, and I love this um, quote, you can observe a lot by observing. Mm. <laughs> um, and it's so true. Um, we often think, um, and I was just going back to car journeys and, and agile thinking, mm -hmm. but um, I just added in a couple of thoughts here for the car journeys but um but helping children for example connect what you see so what you get when you cross a you know a butterfly with a cow or you know just oh if you see, yes uh-huh well just get them mixing things up you mm -hmm. know on a, on a journey oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, and and just having fun uh mm -hmm. with, with bits of information and and spotting things and then playing you know playing with them quick yeah. things but um that's something very you know in a couple of seconds that little you know all parts of the brain will have lit up mm -hmm. uh, to come up with some fun answers there yeah. so if we go to the next slide i'm going to move on a little bit from observing and observe uh, being looking and seeing and what's the difference and hmm. Um, recently, uh, I live not far from the River Thames in, in mm. London, and we get two tides, two tides a day, a high and a, and a low tide, mm -hmm. twice a day. And so when the tide is down, it's a wonderful time for mudlarking. I don't know if you have the same mm. phrase. Mudlarking um, is a Victorian term. Oh, okay. And when people in the Victorian times um, would go and try and find what they could in, in the Thames, you know, mm. in the sand and keep the find. So it's become quite popular as a, as a pastime. You often see okay. families down and you probably get that with your river beds, but the, the river right. Thames, it's been, um, you know, such a, uh, a source of trade and mm. mm -hmm. uh, industry. So it's amazing what you do find in, in the silt. Huh. Yeah. Um, recently, uh, I went with some friends and um, some younger children and we were finding, we just went to find, see what we could see. Right. And it really struck me because we were wandering back and we'd been looking hmm. and we had some finds, we had some clay pipes and um, hmm. I had a couple of sort of nice colored stones that I liked, mm -hmm. uh, nothing in particular. And on the way back, 
we bumped into um, a chap who, I don't know, like Peter, his name was, but he, he was a professional. He had a, a metal detector. And oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and I said, what have you got in your box there? Uh-huh. And um, he showed us and he had, I said, oh, wash, you know, we were all agog with what he mm-hmm. had. Oh, what are these? Oh, these are horses' teeth. And I'd never seen shapes like that before. And huh. um, some Elizabethan musket balls, like little pellets huh. and tiny. And then these tiny, tiny little pins. It was no way we'd seen anything mm-hmm. like this. But we huh. decided to walk back and mm-hmm. have a look. We were inspired by what he'd found. And yeah. you know what? We found, because we were looking for them, we were mm. actively looking for them, we moved from being passive, looking, uh-huh. you know, to actively seeing. Mm. And my goodness, we came back with horses, teeth, all sorts of things wow. that we, we we knew what to look for. Our mm. eyes tuned in. And I just couldn't stop thinking how when you know what, you know, so if you do a bit of research before your storytelling on a go journey, right. it's amazing, you know. I was looking at the climate for Texas, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, you've got such a, you know, well, it's so different from. Obviously, it's very from, different from where you are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was thinking, gosh, what would that list look like? And the kind of research I was looking up the birds and the trees. And, you know, mm-hmm. it was interesting when, you know, if you're going out to, to look for something, it's like, right, we're going to see 10 jackdaws today or 10 eagles or do you mm-hmm. see really funny? there's real fun in the storytelling on you know on the go and there's the maths and there's the um working together to find right. it as mm-hmm. well which is yeah really- i know of people that do because we're near the ocean and they go down and they go with their kids they they look for seed pods because um seeds that have fallen off of trees in africa will actually come all the way here to texas and you can find those pods and then teach them um in geography where those seeds started from and how they far they traveled um to get to the beach here um so so yeah there's just so many things but but if if you didn't know it was a seed pod you just you'd walk right over it and yes yeah. not think anything more of it so i'm so glad yeah you brought that up because that is it does it adds a di- different dimension when you know there's things out there that um that you can be looking for instead yes. of just not anything yes it's that subtle shift of mm-hmm. look of you know looking and and seeing um right. and spending a little bit of time to to prep up before you go of what you might find so you get so much more it's enriched you know that trip Right. That you might plan to do, and mm-hmm. so the, the next slide, Peggy, yep. um, was I was thinking about storytelling on the go. Oh, sorry, that was the horses. So there's what you found, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's really cool. And just yeah. suddenly, we looked at the 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 you know the ground in front of us, and it was just looked completely different. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. different so the next slide, um, yeah. please, was this was was about was doing the same, but also something different. So hmm. um, there's a lot to do with, you know, we often get into routines and patterns. And yes. so thinking about what more could we get out of storytelling? Um, we don't always have the time to, you know, but we could do a walk differently. Hmm. Um, not necessarily backwards, but just go the different way around the block or the different way around oh, the park. Yes. I mm-hmm. run quite a lot and... I know if I run the different way around the park, it looks completely different. And right, uh huh. <laughs> that was really quite interesting. And and again, there's lots of psychology, um, psychological studies that suggest that just by doing something different uh, will bring, you know, make the storytelling um, more, uh, you know, enrich the storytelling. Mm. Will increase the creativity and the ability to to, to innovate. So. Huh. Um, looking up you know it's just simple things maybe just focusing on you're going out but you're going to only look mm. up you're only going to look to the left or mm-hmm. the right um right so next, yeah uh, maybe going back to the same place different times of the day so mm. observation right what's, uh what's success you know what's changed hmm. and um the uh looking for uh looking for um 
different uh, shapes and sizes, uh, things, you know, the objects that you might find. Um, mm. How can you bring them to life with your, you know, your imagination? Ah. Um, mm -hmm. So collecting things. Is right. One. Yeah. So yeah. next slide. Um, and my was, daughter found a skeleton the last time we were camping and I don't know if she's even figured out what it is yet but it was so fun to listen to her you know think through her head what all these species it could have been <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> and just to see the creativity start coming out in that and and then she was doing research and she found out about this kid that's cleans skeletons and she learned the process of how to clean it and um so yeah just just that one little find turned into like days, if not weeks of research and fun. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what, how much mileage you can get. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Something. Uh -huh. I forgot to say, pareidolia is the um, thing that I love doing with, you know, with Josh, we would lie and look at, you know, the shapes that we could see in the clouds. And oh yeah. And find mm -hmm. a rock or a stone and it looks, anthropomorphic you know it looks like a character or right mm -hmm. the art or forming you know making other things out of objects right. mm -hmm. um that's wonderful storytelling you know with with objects and sculpture mm -hmm. and shapes and sizes so oh yeah um, yeah so we just um, forget we we forget to look up <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and just and be playful with the things that we mm, might mm -hmm. as well. Um, I saw actually going back to the Thames, uh, another family had laid out all the stones in colour order. And oh. it was really beautiful because <laughs> there was the brick, you know, going through mm -hmm. all the stones and, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. so much opportunity hmm. to, to learn. But so this yeah. one was this next... Um, the next thoughts were around ways to build curiosity. Um, yeah. So the golden circle, um, hmm. just by thinking, you know, having uh, the what, how, and the why, and mm. applying that to virtually anything, yeah. um, suddenly, uh, you know, you've, why, why I just put an example here, and I did look up the answers, actually, and I can't remember them now. Mm. But, um, <laughs> um, Sorry, that's meant to be so. Um, what is the sky? You know, mm -hmm. and actually, you look it up. You think, oh, <laughs> it's <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> it's all sorts of atoms, and you know, it's right, it's, and it's reflected, yeah, and it's it's, reflected, it's not and, exactly yeah. what we see. And yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I was thinking, oh, you know, how's the sky blue? But the space is black. Mm -hmm. Why is by blue suddenly just by applying the, the what how and the why to virtually anything mm. um you've got a, yeah. a a lesson there and or some research to, mm -hmm. to do answers so um and then obviously taking that on further um something i used to do with my son was he had um not this toy but he had a cow a soft cow that he loved mm. and he used to take this cow everywhere and um <laughs> I came across this quote by Jean-Luc Godard, which I thought was, it's not where you take things from, it's where you take them to. Oh, and oh I love that. <laughs> I just thought, isn't that lovely? You know, the thought of, you know, t uh, taking the child's world into different places. Mm -hmm. You know, we took, you know, cow to NASA, to the moon, <laughs> or the, you suddenly, suddenly it's this way to sort of, um, I guess build empathy up with uh, early years, but how would Cal feel? What would he experience? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just applying um, the what, how, how, where, who, when to, to places. And then, mm -hmm. you know, could it be this time? Or, you know, could it be current day? Or would it be in the past? Mm. And in terms of vocabulary, and if you're writing creatively, suddenly your tenses would be changing. So oh, it's yeah. a wonderful way yeah. to to to, to um, transition um, mm -hmm. times and what was life like then or just by getting one draft down and then shifting it to a different um, right. time zone. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And that happens so much easier through 
communication verbally because our kids will naturally catch that so much easier than when they're writing it down on paper. Yes. And so to be working on that, this, the switches between tenses um, at, in that context makes it easier when they, mm -hmm. they move to that in a writing context. I know that um, that's, that's a really difficult concept to get if you haven't experienced it like that. Yes. We're, we're um, as a platform, starting to work with lots of uh, museums. And it's mm. interesting. So we look at, um, you know, different settings because within the platform, there's there's always a setting. You put mm. your characters in and you've got your and objects. And mm. mm -hmm. we've got Victorian streets and there's mm. streets that I know well, but they look so different. So just, for example, sitting ah. in a place and then imagining storytelling on the go what might it be like in the future what mm. might it be like 10 years ago or 50 or 100 years ago right um, yeah the grain again a lovely way to just you know get children's imagination going and and thinking about mm. their futures i guess mm -hmm. storytelling yeah yeah um, so the next slide mm -hmm. uh was coming back to being active storytellers. So something that we see um, really through the Scribe Easy platform, um, and I think this is very common with children who maybe, you know, are on the um, spectrum, for example, um, autistic, for example, or ADHD, often children. And I just think it's a much easier way personally to learn, only because I like to get totally immersed in one mm. thing always spinning lots of plates but uh -huh. i remember sitting on a plane once we'd been camping we were coming back from a little island um just outside of england and uh the the man on the plane my son was quite obsessed with uh, stones at the time and so we had a collection of stones mm. and his man turned around to me and he said you know whatever your son likes just l let him just follow it mm. and stood in my head huh. and uh, you know to, to do that and he, he's now right. massive to football and sports but mm -hmm. it was interesting so I really followed his interest and I mm. used to be quite observant to see where we went you know what give him the choices to to, to what objects would he pick up or right. what would he do with things if we had a collection of things you can see mm. we've got a bowl here from the you know how would he lay them out Hmm. how would he organize them um mm -hmm. you know and, and whether it was shape or whether it was by color so you start to see patterns in your mm -hmm. in, in your child's um thinking mm -hmm. um which it, it it really helps in terms of how to then share information with children because you can see yes. how to phrase it or how to you know mm -hmm. there's so many approaches to to share a topic and to bring it to life but if you know mm -hmm. that you can get in there because it's mm -hmm. hitting the right angle that's going to appeal to them right exactly yes yep it's, yeah it, yeah. it makes it easier on them too because yes. it you it's an open channel um, yes. my middle one was so into superheroes that i even changed all of his math problems to superhero related math problems and he would just get them instantly and he would struggle if we put it in any other context <laughs> so but it just made it's it so easy mm -hmm. yeah it's so true you, you my son says you you sort of trick children mum you know, <laughs> it's, it's just like you're saying like it's just making learning engaging and mm -hmm. for for the child and I think as adults it doesn't really ever stop if you're oh no exactly your brain yeah. is wired in different ways but so the next yeah. slide was just a quick slide mm. around um expanding the curiosity so imagining that you've done your walk or you've done your um you know you you're on the go storytelling but how to keep that going um mm. and to, to sort of flip the learning so allowing children to to teach you back um ah, yes uh -huh. so yeah so what might they make to show you and present mm -hmm. to you um so it might be the stones and then maybe they a map and they'd put the things on the map around the mm -hmm. world found or um so building products you know 
the things. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Creating a treasure hunt, for example, is a lovely way mm. um, for, you know, children to kind of learn how to navigate around, um, you know, like map, map reading or um, showing you that they, you know, their memory of a place where they've been to and mm. dropping things into places, so, you know, so that there could right. be clues to go to help you get to find a place so that if they're learning about a particular place that you might mm-hmm. have taken to. Um, so uh, just uh, the, the books there, actually, I remember the one time in my life where I had sort of creative envy was <laughs> um, a an artist um, had, and it was just a wonderful walk, and she created a podcast. And basically you, you went along to the library and you clicked on some headphones and it was a recording and you you had to find the clues to go to mm-hmm. the next place and it started by going into the you re, you've got your headphones on and you had to mm-hmm. go and find the book that was a particular book in the library by listening to where she said where mm. to go and you pulled out the book and then there was the next instruction and it took you on a magical um historical walk oh, um, wow. and it was so powerful as a concept mm. And I did try it again <laughs> with my son by just doing little recordings and putting uh-huh. these little pressure hump things. So I'd kind of teed it up beforehand. Right. But it, it was really fun to, huh. you know, to do. And with a group of children, you could make something really quite playful. But um, right. that, it, was, it was very immersive as a mm. place. Mm-hmm. Of the history of a place. Yeah. To, to, uh, they were listening to little recordings and sounds and, mm-hmm. and you could stop mm-hmm. and look around. Right. Um, yeah. Which would make you look in different directions than you normally would would look yes. and interact in an environment than how you would normally. It's a, it goes back to that concept you were talking about um, earlier is that, you know, when we do things maybe backwards or differently, that it, it, it gives us an entirely new perspective. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, then we've seen it in the past. So. That's very so, cool. So next slide thank yeah. you, was um, about on-the-go art and using hmm. – um, oh, sorry, that was the last slide. Sorry, I, I was – next slide, Peggy, sorry. We, okay. I was uh, – there we go. Oh, there you go. So on-the-go art. So this is um, standing on a cliff. Um, in Hastings, which is a seaside town. It's probably a very <laughs> different landscape to Texas. Very different, um, yes. <laughs> Our houses are not that close together. <laughs> well, maybe in some places, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking about storytelling on the go in terms of um, art and using photography. Oh, and yeah. just by um, zooming in um, with my camera, suddenly... You know, uh, and then using different filters, mm. I got new perspectives, new angles, just from standing in the same place. Right. And there was something really uh, powerful, you know, from this photos, they could be great, something that you could draw from. Mm. Or, uh, but it just made you, again, going back to, you can learn a lot from observing, observe, you know, the, that just zoning in, going breathing out and looking, you know, macro and then going in Mm. micro. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's something that I think we often forget to do. Yes. Um, We look at everything from one perspective, but actually Mm -hmm. going deeper and deeper, um, whether it's a physical object or just using a camera, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think the sort of, well, in this, it was very much about uh, from a creative perspective, suddenly you've got blocks of color and shapes and the, mm-hmm. the, the photography becomes a very different um, piece, you know, an, an, an right. art. Yeah, uh, it makes you slow down when you yeah. want to stop and take a picture. And we mm-hmm. lived on a farm for five years and I had a friend who would always come out every year and take take photographs because she said, you live in the most beautiful place. But I was always so busy that I never stopped enough to see the beauty until I looked at her pictures and you know just reminded me over and over again I do live in a beautiful place why don't I stop (laughs) you know the the busyness of life gets us so caught up in that and we can do that with our kids too and stop not stop and look but that gift of photography is 
it's amazing to give you just give your kid a camera and I mean, some of the pictures they come back with are, are hilarious oh, <laughs> and a different perspective than you'd ever have taken a picture of whatever the object was of. Because <laughs> so, if they're young, their height immediately. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And you, you see the world through their eyes, don't you? Sort of mm-hmm. adult legs. <laughs> of, you know, right. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I think uh in keeping that going uh yes. lighting is, is really but allowing children to to be playful um mm, with, mm-hmm. with their storytelling with with whatever tools that you know they can you know get their hands on really um right yeah cameras yeah. are wonderful and then you've got things i mean the cutting things up and montaging oh that's yeah very powerful mm-hmm. tool, um yeah, just combining those ideas, but visually being able to do that and then to be able to put words to it afterwards, after you've really thought and and contemplated, you know, all of the, that crossover. You know, it's you took that concept at the very beginning of our discussion about, yeah, what would a been mashup be between, you know, this and this? But yeah. now when we're looking at a photograph, we have a little more time to contemplate that and really think deeper into it. And for mm-hmm. kids who have slow processing speeds, that is key to have mm. images so they can t- have the time to give the words to those images too. Yes, yes, the descriptive powers, the colors, the, the shapes mm-hmm. that we see. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. I just know we we went to um, we went took our kids to Rome for ten days, and and my daughter is an artist and she is one of those that has always been very observant. Um, she didn't learn it from her mother, um, but she would sit in these cathedrals, and all of a sudden she sat down and she was looking at the ceiling. She goes, "Do you know that every one of those tiles, the the flowers up above, are different?" I'm like, I would have never even looked at the ceiling, let alone <laughs> spend enough time to figure out that they were all different shapes. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant power but, of observation yeah, yeah yeah but you know that's to cultivate that yes, um, yes. and just that creativity it just increases mm. by being able to observe so yes yeah uh, so then the next slide we um I was just looking at um you know how the things that you might gather hmm. uh, so whether it's photography or the, the drawings or the collections that you've, you've made, but how right. that might start to influence your creative writing. And I mm. just couldn't resist putting in um, um, a little thing from this book that I'm reading because it's mm. just it's topical to me at the moment. And um, yeah. I love the way uh, Catherine Rundell, so this is how she describes a house. Hmm. Um, she woke she woke up no, she woke when they drew up in a street smelling of trees and horse dung. Sophie loved the house at first sight. The bricks were painted the brightest white in London and shone even in the dark. The basement was used to store the overflow of books and paintings and several brands of spiders and the, <laughs> and the roof belonged to the birds and Charles lived in the space in between. Mm. And just thought how by putting those elements of, you know, a pile of books, a house, a bird, mm-hmm. you know, how, how when, if you're reading a book and you show a child what's possible in terms of writing, so right. the next time they go to describe a house, their mm. thoughts are going to go. They might have collected some articles, you know, for, well, who lived in the house? Or what right. would be in the house? And mm-hmm. so something that would inform how they... They might borrow from right it wouldn't just be a description of the exterior of the house there yes. you'd be thinking more interior it, it, and living things and all of that yes that it goes beyond your typical yes. description mm-hmm. so the gathering of article you know things the storytelling on the go those objects can become very powerful um, yeah tools for for the imagination mm-hmm. and how you might connect them seemingly disparate things together yeah. mm-hmm. um, oh, absolutely. So next slide um moving just now t- to towards the end but looking at yeah. benefits and outcomes mm-hmm. um, ultimately uh the storytelling on the go we're building 
a confidence because children were building children's agility in their thinking. Mm. Uh, they're not being tested, so to speak. They're, right. Their imagination. Mm -hmm. You're allowing them to take authorship um, because I think the, the focus should be on allowing the child to lead in mm. storytelling on the go. So you might frame, create a framework for them, um, right. but for them to, to lead, do you see what I mean, with their answers, mm -hmm. the how, mm -hmm. why, the what, just give them the opportunity to make those, you know, to, to find the answers. Um, I think yeah. that the storytelling on the go gives space for hmm. uh, for the thinking and the reflection and the time to you know yeah. to create ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, um, then the, the benefits of the things that you collect and the the reflection oh, yeah. after the mm -hmm. trip, or or you know that you've got time for analysis, organisation skills. Hmm. Um, You've got that sense of well-being, the enjoyment from the activity. Right. Um, if you've set something up and you've been working together, then there's collaboration mm -hmm. and sharing, working together. Maybe the storytelling included finding sticks that you would make a, a structure with. Do you sort of mean? Or um, and then you photograph that, and then the you know the, the story carries on. Um, right. Uh -huh. um, the creativity and ultimately. The storytelling on the go. You're helping your child advance in your family life. You know their their social life, mm. um, their ability to understand others. Um, yeah. I think just by being observant of the people around them and noticing mm. body posture and you know the, all those things that we kind of take for granted, but you could always make a um, you know you might be going out specifically to see. Oh, how many people are smiling today? Or do you see me? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. Um, and finally, um, you know, there's the entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial thinking, mm -hmm. um, problem solving. Um, we might have seen a, you know, a, a, a stream that needed a dam or, you know, those mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. how, how would you, you could keep those stories going long after you've, visited there right yeah uh, yeah it's and, it's amazing how you know we we cultivate these things in our kids minds through the story time process mm -hmm. and yet we're not demanding any output other than ideas um, yes. and eventually that output will be something because we, we just can't keep it bottled up. We can't keep bo stories bottled up inside of us. I think we're, we're just made as a storytelling people. Mm -hmm. And um, and so eventually that will come out, but it's mm -hmm. not forced. Um, yeah. And that's what makes it beautiful too. Mm -hmm. And I think children that feel confident creatively will feel more confident because they've got a sense of value about, mm -hmm. oh, this was great, this thing uh -huh. that I did was great and so they you slowly helping them blossom and right and yes through. yeah um, yeah so the next the next slide peggy mm -hmm. was um just ways in terms of a framework for storytelling on the go um mm. about patterns and observing and seeing how children might lay things out for example the things the tendencies where <laughs> you might ask them where would you like to go today you know that's when you start to see um some patterns but it's a wonderful way to to meet the child where the child is mm, exactly um, uh i saw um and again i have to give you the uh the um the link mm -hmm. but um pete warmby um I, I just discovered this just yesterday when i was putting this together this mm. talk for us um and he tweeted out um and asked his question, has anyone managed to make a living from any special interest? Hmm. And the response was unbelievable from hmm. people that had just focused on one thing because of hmm. autism right. and their careers were unbelievable. Hmm. Uh, you know, working in NASA, you know, and mm -hmm. because they've been allowed to focus and it didn't mean, and I think there's that big worry with parents that, oh, they don't know this or they don't know that. And they were trying to, Fill them with so much stuff. So, so much stuff, exactly. Let the child, you know, follow their passions mm -hmm. and everything else 
will fall, you know, a bit like I was going back to ceramics. Mm-hmm. Um, suddenly the chemistry fitted in, the math, the, right. you know, the, the the storytelling through the clay, through the mm. shapes and the forms that I made, the mm-hmm. crop found my, you know, my, my passion. Right. Um, yep. So yeah. And I especially for that. us on the autism spectrum that um, your brain is a freight train when it's on the right path and yes. you can do amazing things when it's on that, on that track. <laughs> so, yes. yeah. <laughs> and I think there's such, uh, the next slide was just reiterating mm-hmm. what we've just said. I've got a, I didn't know you were going to talk about your um, son with the superheroes, but um, oh yeah, <laughs> you, but, um, you can once you know what their patterns are, mm-hmm. uh, what they love, you can teach anything. Like we were saying earlier, through really, that. yeah, mm-hmm. that's so true. Um, and yeah. then um, just the the last thing was this: the next slide. This is a very accessible book. Um, mm-hmm. It was written a few years ago, but. Um, it's it's a wonderful book for uh, creative thinking. It's very hmm. graphically represented. Um, hmm. You know, there's some lovely examples inside of. I'll just try and find you a page. I should have. Um, it's it's just unexpected outcomes from a graphic. Um, I should have marked a page for you, but hmm. um, oh, here's one. I don't know if you can see here, but. Um, Oh, yeah. uh, it's a candle with uh, with some numbers down, you know, down the side. But it's, it mm-hmm. was put together by some advertising creatives who did graphics, um, and it it's very accessible for hmm. parents. I felt to, to to see how they can encourage children with connection making. Right. And, yeah. And so, if you're listening to the podcast, the title of that book is "The Secret of Highly Creative Thinker," or the oh, "The yes. Secret of the Highly Creative Thinker." Yeah. Thinker. Yeah. yeah. How to make connections. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh. that was that was my that's my contribution for the topic today. Awesome. Well, yeah. That that, that filled the hour. <laughs> so, um, and it was so much good information. Um, yeah. I. I think the 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 more that we share this this idea of you know learning um, and boosting creativity, um, the the better off that our kids are going to be in the future. Um, just because we need creative thinkers and we need to be able to cultivate that, um, like you said before, it gets cultivated out of them, <laughs> and then it's much more difficult to to get that to put back, back in. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, just I used to teach um, further education as well as um, early years, and taught in a further ed college for around eleven um, eleven years. And would have doctors and lawyers and um, also. Sorry, my phone's like. No, oh, no. <laughs> oh, I think it's because people are trying to get into the house. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> um, the, uh, the 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 confidence. They were highly academic, but mm. their um, their creative confidence with mm. just the love of play. Um, it took a long time to kind of build yeah. that up and get that um, agile thinking back. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think we all can be, uh, you know, keep our storytelling skills on the go as parents as much as children. It's a mm-hmm. lovely time to re kindle yeah. our yes, brains exactly yes well thank you for inspiring us in that and um if you want to find out more about amanda's program scribe easy at um you can go to scribeeasy.com and if uh, you watch on the youtube channel we'll have that link in the description so that you can just click on that um, but if you're listening on the podcast it's s-c-r-i-b-e-a-s-y so it's kind of scribe and easy, but the E is shared and then .com. So um, you'll want to check out her website and and all of that. And on the screen is how to connect with you as well. So thank you again, Amanda. I appreciate your time. And I know you've you've kind of had some moving around today and, and it's a different time zone. And uh, we appreciate you uh, making time for us in your, your schedule and sharing with us. So, and, well, bless, and thank you, Peggy. It's thank a pleasure you. To be here. 
Yes, and we're excited that you're a new partner, and you're and so even if you go to the Sped Homeschool website, you'll find the Scribe Easy um, product, and we're excited to be um, be working with you. So, right. so well. yeah. Yeah. Back and thank us. you. Yes. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you as our viewers as well. And um, just love that you join us every week. Um, so we are wrapping up the month of April and the on the go learning next month is mental health awareness month. And so we are going to be focusing on mental health issues um, starting next week. And next week specifically, we're going to be talking to um, I can't remember my guest name. It's Dave Carl, I do believe. Um, but the the title for our conversation is Boosting Self-Confidence in Students Who've Been Bullied. And Dave grew up with a disability and is going to kind of share with us what it was like to go through that and then to, um, to be able to build up his confidence after those bullying experiences so that you can um, share that with um, your children as an encouraging story. And he's also a, a book writer. So, um, but just know that um, this broadcast was sponsored by viewers like you. And if you'd like to make a tax deductible donation to Sped Homeschool, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, you can do that on our website. Just visit spedhomeschool.com. And in addition to making a donation, you can also find a lot of really helpful homeschool resources on our website. So search around, see what you can find. You can find curriculum like Amanda's um, Scribe Easy program, or you can find therapists and tutors, um, testing professionals, lots of um, incredible articles written by our, um, our partners as well. So, um, so thank you again, all of you for joining us. And um, thank you, Amanda. And we'll see you all again here next week, same time, same place. And um, until then, have an awesome week and God bless everybody. Mm -hmm.